You know, a lot of times people get their um, their identity into who they are with what they do, right? So he's being masculine, leading these productions and, and shows. But when that went down and he and you were going full in and he had to start serving you, most people would completely crumble their identity, let alone a man and their masculine energy mm -hmm. and turn completely passive. Hey guys, back with Emily, Jake, and Kev today, and we're talking all about outgrowing relationships, whether it be with your partner or your friend. Uh, we are going to get into this because I know a lot of us feel guilt sometimes about having to say goodbye to anybody in our lives. We're going to help you with that coming up. Kev, Maria, how long have you guys been together? 26 been a 26 minute. years 26 years yeah. 26 wow. years so this mindset this belief that you just shared kev that's so beautiful how have you always had that because mm -hmm. my dad was like that he changed diapers he was like he but he was very blue collar but he was not yeah. afraid to do all the other things because my mom was a working mom and that's the other and thing she too. was strong too yeah but the other yeah. thing too is like when when the other person's working that's what i understand it's like hey Guys, yeah. if your wife is working and like, come on, like you yeah. can't, yeah. like Maria jokes, like, you know, with some guys, Kev, all they have to do is just be good on the grill and they're yeah. heroes yeah. and that's not <laughs> enough. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. your wife is working, that's yeah. not enough. But I'll also say if the person is at home and the other person is working, like when Maria was working, I'm like, hey, when it comes to the house, I got it. You right. know, don't worry about right. anything, and I don't need my me time, and I don't yeah. need my daddy juice. Like, yeah. no. Ryan Seacrest, when I would host live with Kelly with him all the time, would talk about, you know, this guy, he's like, Marie and I used to work out at the same gym, and he'd be in the car outside waiting for her. Because Kevin, for us to have time together, he would drive me to my thing. Well, you also were exhausted, Maria. I was 20 you were 20 hours a day, yeah. 50,000 shows at the same time, and so, and I was exhausted. Yeah. So he was like my driver. And would take me everywhere, and that's how that's we would beautiful. get to see each other. Okay. But from go, like when we first got together, he helped me get my first job, and at the same time, his life tanked. So he was directing his first film, and all this amazing stuff was happening, and then disaster strikes, some really bad things mm -hmm. happened, and so he was on the outs. And so i ended up flourishing and succeeding and he would joke with his friends he's like i'm home retired with the dogs yeah yeah he's like i'm I'm in early retirement but he was having to pick up the pieces uh -huh. he was healing he was you know tr there was so much trauma right but he knew that he could still be mm. useful and valuable and be the person behind me helping mm. me every step of the so way good. and you know i always say worked harder in so many ways because of it um but yeah we had our neighbors margie and l next door they were the cutest <laughs> they were older people they took us under their wing in van eyes and and margie was my coach to a degree because you know she was like listen outside this house that's al's world like his job his yeah. corp making his money but here you know this is my world i run the business here he runs the business out there and it was like wow that's amazing yeah. you know so he was doing his thing and that's it now but now we have we've been switching you know the last few yeah. years we, so. we flopped so fast recently yeah. yeah well because of all the health stuff that i've gone mm -hmm. through and just needing to like heal and mm -hmm. have peace so you know we flipped really fast and and i'm like oh i really like this right now this is good yeah. this is what we need yeah. Can, yeah. I, can i add it because yeah. what you guys described right there i want to like almost deconstruct that because it's so powerful a lot of times, and I'll give a personal example here in a second, a lot of times people get their um, their identity into who they are with what they do, right? So he's being masculine, leading these productions and, and shows, but when that went down and, he, and you were going full in and he had to start serving you, most people would completely crumble their identity, let alone a man and their masculine energy mm -hmm. and turn completely passive. And that's when it's now depolarized. But he found a new way to be in his masculine to support you mm -hmm. and still lead in other ways. Wow. Yeah. But he yeah. didn't let his, uh, his role oh, wow. uh, be able to be the thing that is the dictator of that. Same thing as for me is that I am very masculine. That's why when she first saw me, when I'm on stage, I still bring in ma uh, feminine because that's the nice balance between it all. 
but I've had to learn how to, even when I'm not on stage and she's on stage, this is the thing we hear all the time is people, you know, she's on stage and, and I just say this because it's so special and maybe you could add into that after Emily, but like, I love watching her. Like people like take, they took photos of me and sent it to her and be like, look at him, the way that he looks at you. And it's like, yeah. that's because I found a way that even when I'm not in my current role, which is speaking or training or transforming mm-hmm. lives, I could still be the masculine one that holds my position mm-hmm. to show love and actually be there. Yeah. And that still makes me who I am. Where if not, if she's now taking my role, I could have this almost mm-hmm. like inferior identity of like, I should be up there. Right. Yeah. Kind of, and it, and it, it, I don't even have to say that, but my body language could show that. So I think just what you shared there is so powerful because even in those role changes, who you are to your core yeah. didn't change. No, yeah. you're right. Just oh find God. new vehicles right. to express it. This one, are you kidding me? He would cry watching me do my thing, Ugh. like my mom, like loving me like my mom Ugh. when I would do stuff. Yeah. Like he sure. cheered for me more than even my mm. own. You know, well, just as much proud, as my own so parents. So proud of you. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? Yeah, always. We were at the Special Olympics, I think, and Maria Shriver saw him holding my purse and taking fi- pictures of me with fans, and she was like, that man, uh-huh. you are so lucky oh, to have so that man. Lucky. And I was like, well, I know. <laughs> and don't you feel like, because Kev was like that, I mean, look at your career and all that you've done. Yeah. Oh, do, I wouldn't have you, been able to do half do you of it feel without like him. You, that you could have like a stable, of course, strong and steady. In this crazy place? Yeah. Like that's the thing I've yeah. really loved about you. So you've just been stable and strong and steady and and just there's this light around you and i I feel like now that i know the back end of it and this Mm. teamwork philosophy thing it like yeah wow thank you yeah no it's been a team but my parents were on the team too like we've all been a team we've all helped each other there's no way i would have been able to work fifty thousand jobs at the same time and have the success that i had without them and without him because you can only do so much on your own and you know it does take a village but you need people that are i mean he wanted it almost more for me than i did funny enough well, i just didn't want what happened to me to happen to her and i'm like it, i was like it'll never happen so like that's why if you see how much advanced coordination has been done <laughs> always five ten years <laughs> the ahead, man behind the curtain it's always been you know the movie theaters the gas pumps the all the other stuff it's just been so i'm incredible. like no it'll never happen no matter what no matter how sick you get it, I don't care. Yeah, there's never I'm envy. I'm keep Thank it going. God. Yeah, don't worry. Never. Yeah, you know, you're okay. Never, never, never. By the way, it doesn't mean we haven't had our own problems right. and we haven't had, yeah. right. you know, like I. Always the thing we started with on this show is about growth. Mm-hmm. And I said to you, you know, I've been with Kevin since I was 19, so there's no way I could have known how to verbalize that then. Yeah. But there were times when he saw that I was having like growth spurts. Let's uh-huh. say. I went to Tony uh-huh. and I'd come home with all this uh-huh. new information, this new knowledge. And and he, I remember him saying, shit, I got to start doing this because if I don't, we're going to grow apart. Yeah. Wow. So you have to grow together. And so, you know, now he's he's obviously been doing more and more work but this show i just told somebody yesterday this show has kept him on point and going to school every day going Mm -hmm. to school every day but it's Mm -hmm. it's making him more aware of his choices in every area of his life yeah food health you know relationships everything i had a moment yesterday with somebody where she was talking about something Brene brown says about growth and how if we're constantly growing and in this self-help world, we're always evolving, that we're not the same person that we were a month ago. And it really hit me hard because I know I'm in a moment where I'm uncomfortable because I'm feeling I've outgrown certain people in my life. And it breaks my heart, but at the same time, I can't avoid it. I see Kevin who's in work relationships with people that he's outgrown Mm -hmm. and he's not feeling great about it because when you feel like you said you're going to do something with somebody and now you're like, Ooh, I've had time and distance and it just doesn't feel right anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like a lot of us will feel guilty. I think a lot of us will feel really badly about, saying goodbye let's say to a friendship because Mm -hmm. it makes you look bad 
that you can't keep friends or something. I know I had a friend yeah. that I was coaching through this before. He's like, I don't want to be the one who's always losing friends. I was like, well, they're not really nice to you. Right. They're actually dragging you down and you're about to, this person was about to soar career wise. Mm -hmm. And he was going to tank his career just to please his friends who were jealous. Oh my word. Literally. Oh my gosh. And I said, I'm, I'm watching this. I'm seeing it. Now you have a choice. I'm telling you, like the crystal ball is just not even a crystal ball. It's so plainly obvious. Mm. And the second he let go of them, he soared. Mm -hmm. And so, and he had to get okay with the idea that, oh, he might be that person who has outgrown his friends. Mm -hmm. But you can outgrow relationships too. So I'd love to just kind of chat a little bit about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, oh my gosh. This, this hit me like when I first decided to be an entrepreneur and to build the life of my dreams. I remember having all these dreams and this is what I'm gonna do and I'm reading all these books and I'm learning sales and I'm doing whatever it takes. And the group of girlfriends that I had grown up with were just like, like talking crap. I remember vividly, I made my vision board in my little apartment and the girls got together over Christmas break. There was like seven of us and there was two of them snickering by the vision board. And I just knew I'm like, they're talking shit. Cause I wrote myself out this check for a million dollars. And I had this picture of the ocean. I wanted to get out of Minnesota and live in Southern California and all these things. And that's when I was like, they're not real friends. Like they don't support me. I love them going to pharmacy school. I love them doing this, going to nursing school. That's the, that's what they want. But I realized in that moment, they don't really love me for me. They love me because of proximity. And most of the time we're friends with people because it's convenient. Yes. Unless we deliberately choose. Or familiar. Familiar. Because it's been so long. And Yeah. So that's when I was like, you know what? This isn't this. I don't like how I feel because after I hung out with them, I felt like less than I feel like I needed to take a shower or I felt drained. So those are all the things I'm yeah. like, you know, so that or was, even embarrassed for the things that you want. Embarrassed. Right. Yeah. That's why I hate vision boards for that respect. I yeah. love them and yeah. I make them, but yeah. I hide them. And then it's so sad that you have to hide them because I'm like, I don't want anybody seeing my, right. my things, like right. what I want, because you know, I remember when I first got my first job in LA, everybody was doing the same thing. Everyone snickered, everyone poo pooed, everybody was like, oh, you're leaving, ow, oh, all this stuff. And I'm like, oh my God. And and if it's happening to you, just know they feel less than. Totally. They feel shame. Yeah. They feel like yeah. jealous right. and unhappy with themselves. They didn't know that more was possible. Like there's, it's all them. Mm -hmm. And they don't belong with you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Hundred percent, yeah, and it, it's an evolutionary process because we're always growing, we're always changing in the seasons of your life. You're not meant to always have the same friend. I mean, I I think it's awesome if you have the same friend for ten years, twenty years, thirty years, forty, whatever. But the truth is, like, I'm sure you're having new friends now, being a mom. Mm -hmm. There's different things to bond over, a career, all that. There was a period where I would hang out with people that. They weren't entrepreneurs and I'm, I, I mean, I guess it's still kind of similar where I'm like, I can't really relate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's it, the mindset thing. And so it's being okay with like, let's bless the time we had, but let's understand it's time to move on. And for me, I think of my last season, like even last year, I broke up with a friend and, you know, I would talk to Jake about it and I'm like, Every time she texts me, I feel this dependency thing. I feel like I'm never good enough. And mm -hmm. and I, I I cannot like, and I'm sure anyone the listening can relate to this. I cannot like date you almost. Like I can't, I can't, yeah. I'm, I, can't I can't be the girl that calls you every day. I don't have the capacity for it, nor do I want to. Yeah. And I constantly felt like with this friendship that no matter what I did, I couldn't feed her enough i couldn't it was so draining but i didn't realize it was so draining because we had been friends for like 15 years wow and so i was like i must be this because we've always been together but if i actually looked at the relationship i'm like what is what's growing from this because it's all relationships should be an equal energy exchange i pour into you you pour into me like some days you're down some days i'm up 
Like it's just, it's a vibration. And mm-hmm. if we're not vibing at the same level, it's gonna pull me down and that's what was happening. And so I just had to have that bold conversation of like, look, I feel like I'm always a disappointment to you. I feel like we're at a different phase in our life. I, I love you and I will always love you, but I just cannot be this for you right now. And it was like the hardest, but mm-hmm. most freeing conversation I had in my life. What did she say? She cried a little and she's like, no, I get it. And you know, I mean, if we'd go to dinner there, like there was nothing anymore. There was nothing. Yeah, I know, I get it. And she would just complain about her husband or, I just can't even like, I don't, I'm not on vibrate there. I just don't, you know, so. It's good. You know, this, this whole situation, and thank you for sharing that, Em, that's that's special you share that. This, This whole situation of outgrowing your friends and the whole, like what's going on, like, you know, this is like biblical, right? Like we just actually had a message at our church uh, not long ago where even when Jesus was on his mission um, for his three years, he went back to the town that the people knew of him as the the son of Mary. They knew him as the, the brother of uh, James or, you know, like they knew the familiarity of who this man was, not the son of God for, for those that, you know, are subscribed to um, the Bible and he was there to create miracles and to obviously forgive people of their sins but he even said that because they have already put their familiarity and expectations on me i am not able to do the full thing that i was going to do he still healed people but because and it, literally this was a mind-blowing i'll have to get the exact so it was like scripture. he was unable to even do his work because Correct. of the energy coming back at him and this is the crazy because thing of the is doubt. he wow. still healed this is this is the paradox he still healed people but he was there for more than just healing. He was there to literally forgive people their sins, which is more than just healing. But he said that even then he wasn't able to do that because they already had the familiarity of them questioning, isn't this the son of Mary? Instead of, isn't this the Messiah? But because the people knew mm-hmm. of him and used their familiarity, they even hindered his full capacity. And how much more different is that for when we have the people that know us of our old identity that frame us as that identity the son of mary the brother of james were you oh, aren't you the woman that uh was part of that company or weren't you a nurse like what you did four years of nursing that was my story you're gonna go say you're gonna go do this now where the people that you meet in that new time they don't know your old mm-hmm. identity mm-hmm. and so they weigh that on there because that's all of the what they're familiar with yeah and familiarity is a, is a very um uh, degrading thing yeah. yes it, complacency comes from it and complacency as we know best there is nothing that plateaus there's nothing neutral it's either growing or dying complacency usually leads to a slow slippery slope that is going down but it's so subtle and we see this in society today it's so subtle that we say oh it's okay that that's happening right it's subtle it's okay but look at how much like worse it's been over the three five years for many different situations and it's the same for relationships and friendships um that we say oh you know what it's okay that they're staying the same or it's okay that you know we're just familiar with them we feel this is where it comes to it we feel more pain to say no and say i'm done with them than the pain of us not achieving our goals or where we want to go because it's further away so we're willing to sacrifice the temporary pain and say i don't want to feel that pain for the long-term desires of what we have because that pain is more relevant to us that's why we have to take ourselves out of this this idea of like in three to five years like is this even going to be relevant Mm -hmm. like in three to five years is this little pain of me having this conversation with this woman or my friend or or my my person like is that even going to be relevant to where i want to be three to five years from now and sometimes that helps us realize like Mm -hmm. it's going to suck right now it's right. going to suck having that conversation. It's going to suck telling my, my parents that I'm going to leave nursing after four years and say, I don't feel aligned with this. I'm making six figures. Um, I'm helping people. I, I'm, I'm, and I love nurses. They're heroes. But it wasn't for me anymore. And it, was, and it sucked. And, and it made them feel so shameful. Of It made me feel shameful. They were disappointed in me because they saw me go and chase personal training yeah when he's i'm gonna leave a a six-figure job to go make barely any commissions but it was my passion it was my calling i loved health and that's what got me on to where i am today i went from personal training online training business strategist speaking met emily like that would have never happened Mm -hmm. if i was rotting inside because i was afraid of giving that temporary Mm. conversation saying i'm gonna tell you mom and dad that this is not where i'm going and i'm going somewhere else 
and we just sometimes avoid that pain. We avoid mm-hmm. it, we avoid it, and avoid it. And sometimes you gotta just suck it up and do that because the long-term vision will never occur if you don't do that. Mm-hmm. And that's the same with the friends. 100%, and let me take up for the friends. You know, it's a good note for friends to say, let the person evolve. Like, you don't have to get kicked to the curb. You can get evolve, oh, that, wow, you're doing personal training, that's amazing, good for you, you know, like, you, but they, they're making that choice too. Like it's, it's, it doesn't have to be that way. Right. Cause I have friends who, you know, like that have stayed with me for decades and then I have others that yeah. it's the same thing. But the ones who've stayed with me are the ones who they're excited about my evolution as I'm excited about theirs. Totally. Yeah. Cause you have growth minded friends and unfortunately a lot of us have yeah. fixed my, well, no, no, I mean, not all of them. No, I mean, I don't, I've, I've, there's a lot of pain this, and I still have yeah. to deal with this and it's painful when you're a codependent, <laughs> you know, you want to hang on and then you, you grow up in a, uh, like a, a neighborhood environment where it's all about being loyal, and mm-hmm. keep it real, yep. being like, you know, being loyal to your people and, you know, so it's a lot, there's a lot of charges attached a good point and it's tough so it is no it's it's always a challenge but the ones i'm just saying the ones that have made it through are the ones that have evolved yeah too or they've been open to my evolution right like i have a friend who's like i think what you're doing is crazy i need stability i have my thing but man it's awesome i love yeah. it yeah and we're great yeah it sure is you, you know? want is genuine and you can yeah. you can feel when it's genuine and you can feel when it's not right with you in your career have you had like strong women that supported you and like cheered you on or how has that been or did you know when you started like this is my mission and like how has that evolved I wonder I feel like I mean I knew I wanted to be out here and in the television and film world since I was 13 and then when I met Kevin that was kind of like I'd done baby steps to kind of get to Kevin. I'd done like pageants and modeling and things like that. But, um, you know, once I got out here, everything just kind of took off. Mm -hmm. Um, I had my best friend from growing up and then I don't think I had a lot of time for friends to be honest. My friends were the people that I worked with every day, but you definitely had the ones (laughs) poo pooing on your vision board. I had a lot of, yeah, I definitely had that. Kevin's my memory bank, just so you guys all know. I yeah. tell people all the time. He's my US. He's yeah. got a lot of USB. And because device. I was older, I had been through what you be- had uh-huh. gone through. Uh-huh. Um, so I was like, get away from them now. Do you want to make it or not? Oh. Like, this is this is this is just nonsense. This mm-hmm. is click stuff, like oh. just stupid stuff. And he just said he. And they were relentless. And by the way, they're still straight. to this day, twenty years later, still trying to like get go away. Like yeah. no, I like, yeah. you. Do you want to make it wow. or not? Bye. Right. Like mm-hmm. you, you know, you want to yeah. go to the moon. You're not going to the moon with yeah. these fools. Yep. Like bye, yeah. bye. And then, as far as you know, it's been hard um, with her. Bria. I think there's some older executives in our business who've seen you and mm-hmm. really get you and resonate with you. More are coming because you just have made it through. But I'll name drop a little bit. I remember I loved um, Heidi Klum. Remember. Mm-hmm. She was great. So I bumped and started talking to me at a party. And we was like, We're oh, at the Golden Globes. Right. And this is like, oh, this is one of my agents. She just pulled the agent aside and started beating the crap out of She needs to be up. bigger. Why don't you do more you for d- her? He start, she started attacking. And it was then, amazing. And then Seal comes over and goes, yeah. Like, what do you have to say about it, buddy? He's like, ah, I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just, it was just a nice moment, you yeah, know, when you see moment. some of those people yeah. who are real champions. Lisa yeah. Gibbons was always really yeah. wonderful Lisa's great, to me. yes. I mean, there were, you know, there were Meredith Vera. There were so uh-huh. many women who were really kind and wonderful, but it's not like I had a lot of people that were like, let me take you under my wing. No, you didn't have you. time either, unfortunately. I didn't have time for that. Yeah. No. I was like... Yeah, deep going. in the. I mean, I was waking up at one in the morning to do the Today Show on the East Coast, oh, man. and then going right to Access Hollywood after that, then doing my nightly news and Today Show stuff, and then just nonstop, you know. And if it wasn't that, I was writing a book or doing a movie or something. So wow. it was. I was a human airplane. I have millions and millions of miles wow. on airlines at this point. Wow, crazy. And you're, but ju- and you're just getting started. Yeah, yeah getting started. that's the beauty. Always just getting started for but all I of us. But I definitely. Yeah. I think that I think it's also been lonely because of that. Mm-hmm. So there have been so many times where I've like felt so lonely and um, and and also lacked the community because in LA everybody's forty minutes away. Totally, it's not so easy. you can't really see. Oh my gosh, sorry guys, that's my alarm. 
everything's good in LA everything's 40 minutes away yeah yeah so it's a commitment it's a commitment to have to yeah, see somebody and right. when you already have such an over scheduled life yeah the first thing that goes is your community 100 percent. and that's what you need mm. the most so then Kevin would see me get sad and he was like you need to go see Vin or whoever it was at the time yeah. or he knew they would make me feel you know connected again right but um but yeah it's hard and it's i've you know in the last couple of years there have been there's been a lot of weeding out mm -hmm. and it's made me so sad because some of these people are really they're really nice people yeah and i'm like wait they didn't text me when my mom died uh, they didn't they didn't they live next door like they couldn't come over yeah. and give me a hug like or right or they just totally disappeared right and and so I'd had to just listen to the messages mm -hmm. and be like, okay, well, clearly they're not meant to be in my life right, anymore. Right. Or other people who were just, you know, you know, mm -hmm. getting in their own way as well. So, mm -hmm. but, you know, we never want to feel like those people that can't keep friends. There's right. such shame around that. Right. Right. Um, but as Brene Brown kind of has said, you know, we're constantly growing and evolving. We're not mm -hmm. the same people. So well, we're not she said to Emily same said place. too about change of seasons. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. I'm I am in a different season now. Yeah. I'm realizing that with Athena, there's only so much time in my I, day. Straight up. I gotta focus on my health, yeah. which means I've got my self care regimens that I have to follow mm -hmm. so that I can be my healthiest and best mm -hmm. for her. I've got my show commitments here, mm -hmm. I've got my family commitments. There's very little time. Mm -hmm. So if you are not mm -hmm. really adding value right. in my life, if you're not sparking me, making me feel like if, right. if it isn't what you said, a, an honest, even exchange. Right. I love that. If we're just kind of like, I mean, I feel like sometimes I'm talking to certain people and I'm just going through the list of, well, how's so-and-so in your life? How's uh -huh. so-and-so? How uh -huh. are you? Because yeah. I don't want to make it all about me. Right. So I go through all of that. It's all the same. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay. Cool. Yeah. I gotta go. Yeah. There's not enough time in my budget and I'm really yeah. grateful for it. Yeah. Because I've always heard that life will really be prioritized when a kid comes mm -hmm. and it's fucking awesome. Uh -huh. So now I'm like, I don't have time for anybody's bullshit. Yeah. 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 Um, but I am coming to places where I'm realizing, oh, like definitely have outgrown that mm -hmm. person. And it's Sorry. okay to go we we outgrew each other, but I still love you and love I you. send yep. you love. I think you know, and I honor we, all yeah. the great times it, and the amazing things yeah, you've done for yeah. me. And like, listen, I'm gonna keep up with you on Instagram or see your stuff. Like, it doesn't mean like I'm cutting. There is people you need to straight up cut yes, off. Let me cut. just say that, yep. like trash can it. But there's people that it's like, right. no, I still love you, and I might we might run into each other. Uh, but you're just not gonna get my time there's or my reserves to hold them in. And I like to have different types of friends for different types of things. That's right. I you know, that. and they feed different parts of me. And people yeah. show up in different ways. Oh my gosh. So certain friends, right. Like yeah. you, you know the ones well, you go to for different right, things. Right. I also was telling Kevin yesterday, I'm like, if I have a little time, I want someone who's gonna like uplift me totally. or show me something new to yes. be excited about or aspire to or, or inspire me. Speak into you, yeah. But you also, Maria, have yeah. we all? You have it in your reserves because you do every day, and so do I. But and, um, you guys do too because you're in the self help community for friends who do genuinely need your help. It's well, not the friend who's duh. always. Like that friend right. was always a problem. Oh, like, okay, enough. Like, yeah. you know, either fix it or, you know. Yeah. So you're still there for those people. But also, like, I'm noticing certain people, because seasons change, very well put, I have friends who are now 20 years later coming back into season. Yeah. yeah. Now being a dad, I'm calling some of my, my yeah. best friends from college who are dads. Mm -hmm. Right. And they're like, oh, okay. And it's great. Yeah. So we've reconnected. So it doesn't mean the door's close permanently mm -hmm. it just means like you said yeah. right now it's just mm -hmm. here here's thank you for sharing that and that's that's the beauty of the circle of life of how things work yeah. here, here's the issue though because once again people are listening to this like oh well you know great for you guys right great for this and all that the question is is what does success mean to you right because success is not an objective thing it's subjective Success for these people we talk about is they are a part of the community. They have a group of friends. They feel like they are just, you know, getting by and living a good life and they, all these things. That's mm -hmm. success. Great. Then, then go for that. Yep. We are on a different framework 
and I'm sure those listening are as well, where success for us is different. It Success, like you described, if, if success is not taking full care of your health, not fully loving your your beautiful baby Athena, being there for your, your husband for 27 plus years, um, pouring life into others and, 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 and doing all that. If that's not success, then I don't know what is because that's yeah. your success. Yeah. And if success requires for you to cut people out that are not fully serving you or distance, not cutting them, but distancing them so you could experience that, then that's where the, the problem is because is people try to uh, project their success onto yours and say, but you're not being in the community as much. You're not showing up to all these birthdays and yeah, these weddings. Yeah. You're not inviting me. It's like, that's your success, not mine. And, and that's where sometimes people just will never understand. Right. Ne- they will. And that's yeah. okay. Yeah. You do not always need to be fully understood just as much as you will not mm-hmm. fully understand everyone else. But I just wanted to really bring that up because you have a success formula. You have Kevin, you have a success formula. Emily does Emily and I together myself individually. And we're very similar to you both where it's lonely. You know, mm-hmm. Tim Grover, who who's coached uh, Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, I was just listening to him not long ago. He was like, the biggest thing that all these CEOs and all these top people and, and, and those that I even speak to on stages, they don't really know how to grasp is the lonely factor. Mm. And the real successful people, and he's seen it firsthand with athletes, but let alone of people of many types, is he's like, loneliness is not you feeling like you are depressed or you are feeling... Uh, lonely and and there's no one that wants to talk to you loneliness is that when you're in a stage of 2,000 people or an audience of 5,000 nothing is happening because you are in your own bubble and you only hear your own thoughts you're thinking in different ways and none of the external environment matters and I think a lot of people are afraid of that and they don't want to realize that because he said it himself he's like success requires the ability to get lonely Mm. in that sense and if it's just Emily and I all the well, way. I guess that's f- why I've been successful. No, I've been by the way, Brett, how did <laughs> you not? No, no, wait a second. How do you not remember when Bret Hart was put into the WWE Hall mm-hmm. of Fame professional wrestler? He said, hey, listen, if you guys want to make it, work hard, be resilient. All the cliche stuff, yeah. which is actually true. Right. But the last thing was the most powerful. And he said, and Get be ready, ready to a embrace life a life of loneliness. Mm-hmm. And you're like, ooh. Yeah, it's true. But it's true. But... Um, we do need community and we do need friends 100%. and, um, and you have to make time for it. And I think Kev also, what you said is so important. It's not that, you know, we're trying to build this utopia where everything's got to be perfect. Like for me, I know what I have time in the budget. I had a worker in my backyard whose wife was sick yesterday and I'm like, go be with your wife. Like mm. I, I'm, I have to take care we're of, we're going to dock you for the week, your pay, but Shut go up, funny. S- we're no, going to take care. We got to take care of the people that take care yes. of us. Right. So, you know, we're knee deep in everyone's stuff all the time, making sure that they're okay. Right. I'm not afraid of having problems, but they're the right people me. who right. also are invested. They're contributing they're there for, back to us. That's right. Too. They're there for you too. I don't care if they're paid. Mm-hmm. They're contributing with their spirit too, because they want to be there. Yeah. So you want to be able to be there to help them. It's just sometimes you're outgrowing people. Uh-huh. And I think bringing it back to the, you know, the relationships with couples, it's not just friendships. It's your, you guys as a couple have to keep growing together. Yes. And so, yeah. um, Anyhow, this was so fun. So fun. We'll have to do it again. Oh my gosh, I loved it. And um, before we go, actually, um, let me point out, oh geez, let me point out my um, my water bottle falling. Um, I'm obsessed with your fashion today. Thank you. And oh, thank I'm you gonna go much. on Macy's.com. <laughs> Jake, it wasn't Jake. you. <laughs> I'm going on to Macy's.com and I'm gonna find everyone this skirt this whole look, yes. I'm going to find it because I really, really love it. I was telling you. you that earlier I had really wanted a boxy cropped white button down mm-hmm. or some kind of button down. Yeah. And uh, and I went into the men's department, bought a really large shirt and I cut it and I cropped it myself. because so I was like, this is so cute. Uh-huh. I really like this one. If now. you guys um, haven't already checked out my curated link, macy's.com forward slash heel squad, you can get any of the things that I am loving there. I just have gotten a few new things that I picked out. It's kind of like my, mm. when I need something, I go there. I just yeah. pick everything I love. Yep. And then when I need it, I go grab it. Yep. 
Um, but of course, it also helps support the show. So thank you guys for supporting us through Macy's.com forward slash heel squad. Thank you for being with us um, on this journey with you two the last two days. Mm-hmm. Thanks. This has been such an amazing conversation and we will do more. In the meantime, friends, be nice people, make good choices and be present. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or MariaMenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.